Hey y'all, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Sabrina and welcome to my book nook. So today I'm going to be doing a book review for what has been my obsession for the past couple months. Months? Months. I have made this book pretty much my entire personality. You can ask any of my friends. Actually, friend not plural. I have not shut up about this book and especially with the Netflix show coming out today I have not shut up about it even more. Today I am going to be reviewing Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. Now I've already reviewed another Grishaverse book I did a review for. Do y'all see that back there? Rule of Wolves which is her latest and final installment in the Grishaverse I'm pretty sure. I am going to be doing a review on the first book the one that started it all. And I hope that a lot of people are reading this book because one, they either want to read it before the Netflix show or two, they saw it, the Netflix show and they wanted to read the book. Either way, I'm here to give my opinion on it. So let me just break down how my reviews work before I get started. My book reviews are broken down into four parts. Parts one and four will be spoiler free. However, parts two and three will have spoilers. If you didn't want spoilers, why are you watching this video? Why are you watching a book review? I know that there probably are spoiler free book reviews. I personally don't know how those work because I like calling specific things from the plot. If you don't want spoilers, just watch parts one and four. Okay, great. All right, so part one of my book reviews, I talk about just my starting off thoughts and opinions about the book, sort of a beginning ranting. I guess. I also give a brief little plot summary, spoiler free. Again, it's just kind of what you would see on the back of a book, like its description. Part two of my book reviews, this part will have spoilers. I talk about plot writing and sort of other elements like that. Yeah, basically I just rant about the story and maybe a little bit of criticism. Part three of my reviews, I talk about characters as well as relationships. Sort of favorite characters, characters I hated the most, character traits, character development, and I also talk about relationships, whether that be familial relationships, friendships, or romantic relationships. Okay, so that part will have spoilers as well, obviously. And part four of my review, spoiler free part, I give my final thoughts and opinions as well as an overall rating of the book, and I answer the question, is it, that's backwards, is it a must read? Okay, great, let me briefly sum that up four parts of my review. Parts one and four are spoiler free. Parts two and three will have spoilers. Part one, beginning thoughts and brief plot summary. Part two, plot writing and other elements. Part three, characters and relationships. And part four, final thoughts and rating. Okay, great. Now let's get started with the actual review. So part one, starting off thoughts and opinions. Now I read this book because of book talk yeah i was just seeing like content about this book everywhere including content about the tv show and i remember the day the trailer for the show came out i immediately sat down and i read it and i loved it i read the entire shadow and bone trilogy in two days i know this is a very mixed reaction series they call it another shitty ya fantasy book that just followed the trend. I'll have you know that this book didn't follow the trend, it was the trend. Okay, this was written like a while ago. This was written when YA fantasy was at its peak. So I don't want to hear any slander on the YA thing because if you didn't want another basic YA fantasy book, then why are you reading a basic YA fantasy book? Also, apparently it is Grisha, not Grisha. I was right. If any of y'all watched my Rule of Wolves video, I was pronouncing it Grisha because I saw someone else say that was how you actually pronounced it. It's not, it's Grisha. I was right the entire time. Now, let me just give a brief plot summary. Okay, so the story follows a girl named Alina Starkov, right? And she is a map maker of the first army, which is sort of like the military in the fictional country of Ravka, which is sort of inspired by 1800s Russia. The story follows Alina and her best friend Mal, who she is also kind of in love with. They enter the Shadow Fold, which is sort of this giant chasm of 
darkness that splits the country of Ravka in two. And when they enter the shadow fold, Alina reveals that she has the power to summon light. She is the sun summoner, revealing her to be powerful Grisha. And when she's discovered, she is brought to the royal palace where she's taught to train her powers. The book just sort of follows her on her journey as she tries to deal with being the sun summoner and essentially Ravka's last hope of destroying the shadow fold. And it's it's a lot more complicated than that, but again, this is just sort of like a brief summary. Yeah, great. Okay. Now let's move on to part 2 of my review, thoughts on plot writing and other elements. Okay. So, let me start off by saying the writing in this book not the best. Um, does that mean I did enjoy it? Of course not. I, I very thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just when you read the last Grisha verse book versus the first Grisha verse book, it makes Shadow and Bone feel a little bit like a Wattpad fanfiction. Nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it very much and I'm trying to do this review based off the first time I read it. Like I've said before in previous videos, the writing in the first book of any like YA new universe book is going to be a bit shaky. However, I do admit the world building in this book is very rocky. You're thrown into this world with like 50 different new terms thrown at you and there isn't really much explanation behind these terms later in the book anyways. I remember the first time I read it, it took me like a hundred pages in to realize what a Gracia was and by then I still wasn't like a hundred percent sure. So I will admit the world building is a bit rocky so if you want to read the book and you're going in totally blind, you can do that. Or, if you want to be less confused, do a little research first, nothing spoilery, but just sort of figuring out what Grisha are, the fictional country of Ravka, it'll make things so much easier, okay? Next, let's talk about the plot of the book. I mean, you can't name a character the Darkling and then have it be a surprise plot twist that he's actually the villain. You can't do that. If you were surprised by him being the villain, shame on you because you should have seen that from the start plot pretty solid i mean some parts didn't make sense to me the first time i read it alina reclaiming her power because of the morozova stat i i genuinely don't understand what went on at that point confused on how it happened but whatever now let's move on to part three of my review characters and relationships let's begin by talking about the main character Alina Starkov. I don't get why everybody thinks she's like bland or boring. I mean, she has like quippy remarks and she's strong and confident enough to stand up for herself when someone picks on her. So I just, I don't understand why everyone tries to paint her as this helpless, defenseless, boring Y protagonist. She's not. Also, I cannot express how happy I am that they're making Alina Asian in the Netflix show. Jessie Mae Lee is absolutely gorgeous and, I, and I'm so excited to see some Asian representation, especially in one of my favorite book series right now. I just, <laughs> I'm just so excited. And you know, I love how Lee Bardugo heard criticisms of there not being enough diversity in her book. So she made sure to include some diversity. Uh, there have been some criticisms of forced diversity but I don't think it's forced honestly I think she just heard the criticisms and tried to include diversity without making it seem like she's being forced to do it like she didn't have to make Alina Asian in the show but she did it anyways and I'm so happy she did if I keep talking about Jessie Mae Lee I may never shut up so let's move on to the next character the Darkling this man I have very mixed feelings about him. Am I excited that Ben Barnes is going to play him in the show? 100% yes. Does that mean I like this character? No. Does it mean I hate this character? Eh, I can't, I can't really tell to be honest. And I'm about to drop a real cool spoiler. Finding out that he says you and I are going to change the world to everybody, that hurt. Okay, that hurt. I feel like Lee wrote the Darkling as like horribly as she could in Rule of Wolves because she just can't stand fans idolizing him. I'm pretty sure she's talked about before. I mean, you can just tell how much she hates his character. I still don't think you can call the Darkling like 
just evil like he is a complex character i think originally he intended to use and manipulate alina but along the way he actually developed feelings for her which is why some of his motives are very questionable and confusing however i still agree that he is a very manipulative person and he should not be completely idolized the way he is i don't think people should just ignore the horrible things he's done just because he's hot i think that you can still admire his character and talk about his flaws now let's talk about mal like most readers i do not have the best opinion of mal i think he's kind of how do i say this self-centered honestly and i think he's a little dumb and clueless but i mean he can't really help that although you know he's he's definitely the most tolerable in this book i think i i know that he's supposed to be the good choice the the good choice for alina but nobody likes her with him which i feel kind of bad for but at the same time whatever like he i just don't like his character i don't know why i just don't like him however i will say Archie, is it Archie Renault? Archie playing him in the Shadow and Bone show. I like him very much. Okay, sorry about that. Now let's move on to supporting characters in the books. So I just briefly wanted to touch on Genya. Genya? Is it Genya or Genya? I'm gonna say Genya because that's how I've been saying it. So I just briefly wanted to touch on Genya. Reading about her beginning romance with David is is a lot cuter and a lot sweeter than I remember and I think it's really weird to reread Genya as someone who supports and idolizes the Darkling because this Genya versus those Genyas completely different oh my god I also want to talk about Zoya I forgot how horrible she is in this book after reading Rule of Wolves this Zoya that Zoya two different just two completely different characters I just can't I just can't even I am so proud of how far she's come I love Zoya. Not in this book though. So now that all my character ramblings are done, let's move on to part four of my review. Final thoughts and opinions as well as an overall rating. Okay, so like I said, people dismiss this book and call it trashy. I don't care. If it's trash, I will gladly read it. I loved it. I love the story. This book is honestly what got me out of my reading slump. Now I read a lot of books probably because after this book, I just couldn't get enough. And like I said, I love this book. I love the trilogy. I finished it in two days. I'm so incredibly excited for the Shadow and Bones show. I'm pretty sure I'm filming this on Wednesday, but I'm pretty sure by the time I'm uploading this, it'll be on Friday, which means the show will be out. I will be locking myself in my room, turning off my phone, just completely ignoring everything in preparation for the show. Oh, I'm just so incredibly excited. This book has been my personality for the past two months ish so what is my overall rating of this book well you probably could have seen this coming but five out of five stars like i've said before i'm a very generous reviewer so while i did point out a lot of flaws and criticisms in this book i still loved it i mean it's it's a good book like what else can i say so is it a must read yes 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 absolutely yes um, honestly I, I think it doesn't matter what type of genre you're into but if you particularly like absolutely hate YA fantasy, you probably should not read this book. But if you're just like a normal reader and you don't really care, or you don't read books at all, but you want something to pass the time, or maybe you just watched the Shadow and Bone show and you want to read the books, read it. Read the books. It is so amazing. So good. Side note actually, first time I read the book, I didn't realize Kaz and Nej were in Six of Crows, so I read the entire book waiting for them to show up because I've heard so much about them on Book Talk. So I was just like reading, going, Where's Kaz and Nej? And then it wasn't until I finished the trilogy that I realized they're not even in the series. Yeah. Okay, side note aside, those are all my thoughts about the book. If you watched this entire video, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, don't give it a thumbs up. If you really hated it and you hated my review, give it a thumbs down. Okay, but don't do that. If you want more videos from me, please subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye!